So this episode is definitive proof that teenagers are the fucking worst and will rule with an iron fist when given just the littlest semblance of power. Welcome back to WTF Star Trek, the show where I go through every episode of Star Trek and point out every single thing that made me want to tear my own skin off. The episode starts with the Enterprise coming alongside the cargo ship Antares, whose captain and first officer are beaming over with a passenger. As soon as they beam over, they drop off the passenger, Charlie, who starts making really weird faces. I don't know, I guess he needs to shit or something. Or maybe he's playing with himself, I mean, he is a teenager after all. It is revealed that Charlie is the only survivor of a transport crash that left him alone on a desolate planet at the age of three. And not only did he seem to survive this, but he seemed to thrive on his own. We'll come back to that later. If a teenager, or anyone for that matter, started peering over my shoulder while I was working, I would honestly hit them. I don't know how this guy is managing it. While wandering around the ship, Charlie runs into Yeoman Rand and gives her a bottle of perfume. And just as she's about to leave, he slaps her ass. <sighs> Charlie really is a sexual predator in the making. Yeoman Rand asks Charlie not to slap her ass and to... Tell Captain Kirk or Dr. McCoy what you did, and they'll explain it to you. What? So when educating boys how they should behave around girls, only the men are allowed to teach them? Fuck off! That shit perpetuates the bullshit of the patriarchy and makes things worse for everyone. That's just what Star Trek needs, a musical interlude. While Uhura sings about Charlie, she insinuates that Charlie wants to, um... <clears throat> do Yeoman Rand, which he does, of course. But Charlie gets so embarrassed by this, he takes away Uhura's voice. Charlie is Ursula, confirmed. When passing Kirk in the hall, Charlie asks why he shouldn't slap a woman's ass, to which Kirk responds, Well, uh, there's no right way to, uh, hit a woman. You heard the captain, just hit your women however you want because there's no right way to hit them. I'm obviously joking, but seriously Kirk, what are you trying to say here? Kirk continues to start spouting random bullshit in an effort to try and make Charlie shut up. I bet Kirk never thought he'd be having to give the talk. After losing a game of 3D chess to Spock, Charlie goes storming out into the corridors, where he runs into Yeoman Rand, who tries introducing him to a Yeoman who is a bit closer to his age. Charlie decides to completely ignore her and only focus on Yeoman Rand. So Charlie won't talk to women unless he wants to fuck them. Charlie is an incel. Pass it on. Realising that Charlie is in love with her, Yeoman Rand asks Kirk to have a talk with Charlie so she doesn't have to break his heart. Now, I'm not 100% sure Kirk is an authority to be giving a teenage boy dating advice, considering he bangs every female alien he comes into contact with. Of course this talk doesn't go well, so to get his mind off Yeoman Rand, Kirk takes Charlie to go do a workout. While practicing some body throws, Kirk pins Charlie down to the mat. Another crewman who is working out starts laughing at this. So what does Charlie decide to do? Blip him out of existence. Charlie is a murderer. Pass it on. Kirk understandably calls security so that Charlie can be escorted back to his quarters. But as they approach him, the officers are thrown away by Charlie's mind. So to protect themselves, they pull out their phasers, which Charlie makes disappear as well. Once Charlie is escorted away, Uhura says over the intercom to Kirk, Security reports all phaser weapons have disappeared. Damn, screw being on the Enterprise, Charlie should be in the US sorting out their gun reforms. Kirk, Spock and McCoy have a meeting on what they are going to do about Charlie. They conclude that Charlie was responsible for the destruction of the Antares and that they can't take him with them to Earth Colony 5. When they make a course correction, Charlie takes control of the ship, cross circuit to Uhura's station, and forces Spock to start speaking in poems. I swear, any time a teenager gets any amount of power, they go fucking batshit crazy. Teenagers are just evil. After leaving the bridge, Charlie heads to Yeoman Rand's quarters, and when she asks him to leave, he refuses, instead confessing his love to her. Charlie, mate, she's asked you to leave, so leave. Charlie really is one of those dickheads who won't take no for an answer, isn't he? He starts telling her that he could give her anything she wanted and that he was only trying to be nice to her. Whoa, nice guy alert. Yeah, officers, it's this one. Kirk and Spock run in to stop but are thrown back by Charlie. However, Yeoman Rand thinks this is the perfect time to hit Charlie to get him off her. And he, of course, makes her disappear as well because she wasn't very nice. Charlie then confesses to Kirk and Spock that he had complete control of the Antares 
and that he intends to have complete control of the Enterprise. Uh, can Karen come pick up her megalomaniacal child, please? Kirk lures Charlie to a cell in order to trap him, but as soon as he's in, Charlie makes the entire wall disappear, telling Kirk and Spock they'll be sorry for what they just did. <sighs> Look, Kirk, if you can't contain him, then just kill him. It honestly might be your only option. Charlie starts to wander around the ship and abuse the crew, like turning a young woman who just bumped into him old and removing the faces of a group of laughing people. All right, Wanda Maximoff, don't need to blackbolt them. What's next, turning Kirk into a cheese string? Oh, I don't know if that's a spoiler, should I keep that in? It'll be fine. By the time this comes out, Multiverse of Madness would have already been out for like three weeks, maybe four. Kirk realizes that since he took over the ship, Charlie hasn't made anyone disappear, and that having complete control of the ship may actually be too taxing for him and making him weaker. So Kirk devises a plan in which he will turn on every device on the ship to weaken Charlie's powers, and while this is happening, they are able to tranquilize him. Kirk, in this case, I think it's okay to hit a child. Just knock him out, dude. As everyone on the bridge confronts Charlie in an attempt to weaken him, the Thasians, the ones who raised Charlie, emerge on the Enterprise. Yay, Karen's come to pick up her kid. Finally, fuck. The Thasians undo everything Charlie has done since boarding the Enterprise, and just as they're about to take him away, Charlie begs Kirk to let him stay. Little too late there, buddy. What I want to know is, what kind of morons give a child godlike powers? Like seriously, what did they think was going to happen? But anyway, they take Charlie, never to be seen again. Like literally. At the moment, the Star Trek shows are spanning over about 900 years, all the way from Enterprise in the 2100s to the new season to Discovery in the, like the 3000s. And there's been no mention of Charlie or the Thasians since this episode. And that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. I'll see you guys in the next one. Live long and prosper.